What's up, everybody? Today, we're talking NFL Week 6, 2022. First game up on my slate. New York Jets plus 7.5 at Green Bay Packers. Green Bay, the home favorites. Over-under set at 45 on this one. Green Bay is 2-5 and five against spread their last 7 games. 16-3 straight up their last 19 at home. Packers are 2-4 and four straight up at home versus the Jets. Road teams 3-0 oh and 1 their last 4 meetings. Jets are 8-4 and four straight up their last 12 versus Green Bay. New York is 4-1 and one against spread their last 5 road games overall. Rodgers is 35-20 four and two against the spread as a touchdown or more favorite at home Packers have won and covered in 12 straight games following a loss sorry uh Rodgers over one and a half TD passes in this one I think Green Bay is just a little too much for the New York Jets I don't like this big number for sure the Jets have been playing well I think they're gonna be able to stay close in this game. I might even put a little sprinkle on them as an upset as one of my underdogs. I might put a play on this week. I actually, I know I will put a play on the New York Jets as an underdog, but for the sake of who I actually like and think will win the game, I think Green Bay wins this game. Less than a touchdown though. New York Jets cover this spread way too much for me. I see this more like a maybe like a 24 21 28 21 even still getting under that seven and a half that i i don't like going more than a touchdown especially against a team that's been playing well probably going to run the ball who knows next up on the slate cincinnati Bengals minus two and a half on the road in new orleans to face the saints the over under on this one set at 43 and Taysom Hill, four touchdowns last week. I don't think that with a week to prepare and now knowing how they might deploy Taysom, I think the Bengals will be prepared for when he is on the field. I'm not saying he's not going to score or have a good game. I just don't think that it's going to be crazy and affect and win the game for the Saints like it happened, like what happened last week. Bengals are 11 and 2 against spread their last 13 overall since he's 5 and 1 against spread versus the Saints and 4 and 2 straight up their last 6 against the New Orleans. Total's gone under in each of the Bengals last 8 road games and actually the Bengals are one of two teams I believe it's the Colts as well. The under has hit in 10 straight games that the Bengals have played. 11 for the under is the record and I believe the Cowboys went 12 straight games with the over hitting a few years back maybe 15 16 17 i can't remember what year but but the cowboys i believe have the record for 12 straight overs bengals and colts are each one under away from tying the record that could happen this weekend uh bengals are four and two straight up in new orleans totals gone under an eight of the saints last 12 games saints are two and six straight up their last eight at home underdog is four and one against spread in the last five meetings between these two like I said earlier, since he'll be ready for Taysom Hill, uh, Dalton's 2-0 and versus the Bengals, his old team. He got the win as the Cowboys, and, and I'm blanking on where the other fucking win came from. Sorry about that. But I don't think he will be able to pull anything out of his hat on this one. I like Burrow over 1.5 TD passes and over 252.5 passing yards. I think the Bengals' offense, even though they've looked... Like, they haven't added anything new. They're just the same. They're almost becoming predictable. I don't think it'll have a big effect this week, and I think the Bengals will be able to win this game and cover that small number of minus 2.5. I think the Bengals might win this game 28-15, or 14, 28-17. I, I like them to win by a touchdown, 10 points, something like that, in this game. Next up, San Fran, minus 4.5 at Atlanta, plus 4.5, over under 44.5 on this one. Niners are 8-2 and two against spread their last 10 overall. San Fran's 4-2 and two straight up their last 6 versus Atlanta. San Fran's 2-7 and seven straight up in Atlanta, though. Falcons are 5-0 and against spread this year, 2-5 and five straight up their last 7. Atlanta's 2-9 and nine straight up up at home I, I think San Fran is the better team overall Atlanta is a cover machine the 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 best cover machine against spread I'll get to it in the Eagles Dallas game Dallas Cowboys I'll touch on their numbers later on but the Falcons this year 5-0 and against spread Dolphins were strong a couple years ago last year as well against spread I, I just think this line too much for the Falcons home dogs I love betting home dogs at more than a field goal 
It's too much for me. San Fran wins a tight one, maybe squeaks us out with a last second field goal, something like that. Atlanta's another team, an underdog team I will be putting money on. San Fran money line, Falcons cover the four and a half. And like the Jets, the Falcons will be one of my underdog plays this week that I do put a couple bucks on. New England, plus two and a half at Cleveland Browns, minus two and a half point home favorites. Over under set at 43 on this one. Favorite is seven and two against spread their last nine meetings. Pats are seven and two against spread their last nine versus Cleveland. Home team seven and three against spread the last 10 between these two teams. New England's eight and one straight up their last nine versus the Browns. Patriots are one and five straight up their last six road games overall. Browns are 3-6 and six straight up their last 9 overall. Cleveland's 2-6 and six against spread at home their last 8. Mac Jones, uh, Bailey is his first name. Sorry, I had to look. I couldn't remember. Zappi um, at QB. Is it really going to matter? It's the Pats D and Bilicek that really do it for me. I like New England in this game. They are a dog I'm playing. New England plus 2.5. New England to win this game. By a field goal is my prediction. And it won't be high scoring either. I think that's like a 2017 type of game. 24, 21, something like that. Next up, Jacksonville Jaguars at the Indianapolis Colts. Colts are two-point home favorites. The over-under is set at 42 in this one. The underdogs 6-0 against spread their last six meetings. Jags are 32 13-2-1 against spread their last six versus the Colts. Jags are 5-1-1 one one against spread their last seven in Indy. Unders, under is 9-2 in Indy and 4-0 and oh the last four meetings. And like I said, the Colts, the unders hit in 10 straight games. They're one off from that record just like Cincinnati is as well. So I look to the under in this game as well, under 42. Jags are 3-11 and their last 14 overall and 1-8 and straight up in Indy. So they're good against spread versus the Colts. They're amazing at home against the Colts, but they do not win games straight up in Indy. Trevor Lawrence is 5-17 and straight up and 7-15 and against spread for his career. I like Indy on the money line. I like Indy minus two. If Jonathan Taylor's back in this game, I think he's going to have a big game and he could be the difference. I like Indy to win this one 27-24. I'm liking a lot of these numbers, a lot of these games in the 20s. I know this could even be lower score and this one could be like 17-14 Indy as well. That wouldn't surprise. That's more what I'm thinking. 17-14 in this game, 2017 max because I don't think this, this number reaches 40 between the two of them. Minnesota Vikings, minus three at Miami, plus three. Over-under set at 45 and a half for this one. Vikings are four and two against spread their last six versus the Dolphins. Minis one and four straight up their last five in Miami. Vikings are five and one straight up their last six overall. Miami's eight and oh straight up their last eight home games. Dolphins are 10 and four against spread their last 14 overall. Tyreek Hill's a little banged up. Tua, he cleared concussion protocols. Uh, today or last night. I forget when I heard it. It's Saturday right now, Saturday, early Saturday morning, so you guys know. Um, I, I don't know what to make of this game. I think with all the QB injuries for Miami, Ty, Tyreek Hill being a little banged up, I, I don't see how they have the offense this week to get it done. They might, who knows. But if I'm putting my money down, I'm going to lay the three points with the Vikings, even though they are on the road. Miami's defense is strong. I wouldn't be surprised if Kirk Cousins throws a pick today. I might go over 0.5 interceptions for him. I'll probably go with over one and a half TD passes if that's the number set for Cousins as well. I'm going to look at the team totals for the Dolphins. I might play that under. I like my Minnesota money line, Minnesota minus three in this game. Baltimore Ravens minus five and a half. At New York to face the Giants, who are five and a half point underdogs, four and one on the season. This is the biggest surprise in the positive way for me. New York Giants. I don't know how they're four and one. You, I don't. I don't care who they played. They're still four and one, and they've still won games. The comeback against Green Bay in London last week. I don't know why neither one of these two teams took a bye. The records for teams after being in London without a bye isn't that great over the years since they've been doing it. I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head, so I'm not going to blurt out shit I don't remember for sure, or I don't have written down on my notes for you guys. 
which is well basically just stats and i realized i put that in the light so you guys couldn't really see but whatever home teams five and oh against spread their last five meetings favorites five and one against spread their last six meetings ravens are five and two straight up their last seven versus the g-men baltimore's 13 and two straight up their last 15 versus nfc opponents Giants are 4 and 1 straight up and against spread this year. New York is 0 and 5 against spread versus the AFC North. Ravens D is questionable against the pass as their secondary gave up those big leads, deep balls, a lot of deep passes, a lot of big plays against them late in games. I just don't see Daniel Jones being able to do that. If the Giants get in a hole early, how are they going to dig out of it? Because Saquon Barkley is their entire offense. And I know I'm betting against a 4 and 1 team here, but. I don't care because I, I think the Giants are going to regress a little bit. I'm not saying they're not going to make the wild card team. It would be nice if three NFC East teams broke out. Maybe one of these videos I'll wear my Eli Manning jersey for you guys. Just show you guys like I, I, I'm a sports junkie.